Welcome, everyone, back to Paul.com. I have a, a little special something before we um, get into this segment. Jack told me he was, well, I mean, because he's old. He's still recovering from DEF CON. <laughs> That was like a week ago, Jack. So this is this is how what I have to look forward to is a, a week of recovering from drinking. Um, so I have something that wait, wait, I told Jack. This no would one's, no one's implying that I stopped drinking. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this is uh, what I had for Jack. This was a gift from one of our listeners. Uh, goes by the name of uh, uh, doesn't want me to say his name on the show, but he <laughs> could save. He could he, save. He could save. Yeah, it was close. <laughs> he uh, he gave this to us. It's Armenian brandy. So that's what this is. This will fix your rate up, Jack. Aged 15 years, and uh, I can't. I, I can't get, even. I got uh, underwear older than that, I but it sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> do you have, wait, do you have it on? <laughs> do you have it on now? <laughs> so I'm gonna. I'm gonna let you try a little of this, Jack. You tell me what you think. I tried some before, and it was absolutely fabulous. What do you think? I mean, it's Armenian. This is me putting a little Armenian in you, huh? Oh. <laughs> what you said the other night, too. Yeah, it's Glary about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you just come up with that on the fly, Paul? Or were you, were you actually planning no. on that one? No, John, I've been planning that ever since <laughs> they gave me the bottle. <laughs> I've been waiting to use that line. <laughs> So here's uh, to a little uh, Armenian in you. Here's to a little Armenian in me, all right. <laughs> it is little. Little, yeah, man. That's smooth. Uh, that's pretty good. I'm not a big fan of brandy in general, but since it's Armenian, I have to like it because my last name's Hasdorian, so. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, see, that'll Speaking, fix your rate up. Yeah, that's yeah. the DEF CON play cure. Larry, I'll Speaking. send you some, buddy. Oh, we're going we're gonna to hear some more things about being a drunkard? You know you're a drunkard when you didn't leave the party, the party left you. Probably in the toilet, in the stall, at DEF CON. <laughs> I heard someone's party leaving them <laughs> quite rapidly, I might add. Well, I had, that, I had that one student at Black Hat that threw up all over the bathroom floor. He was going down, what are those, like, what do they call them at Caesar's Palace? Like the big hand grenade things with, uh, like, the really... Oh, yeah. I, t I, tend, I stay away from those. Things. The drinks that you hold that look like a gigantic oh, hand yeah, grenade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Anytime I see someone walking with those, I'm like, oh, that's oh, not going to yeah. be pretty. Well, and it also cracks me up. If somebody could explain, why is it that White Trash insists on keeping the plastic container? It's like they're taking it home as a memento. <laughs> look, not only am I a rampant alcoholic in Vegas, but I'm incredibly freaking cheap. <laughs> hey, let's 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 not make fun of white trash. Actually, I stayed at Paris this time, which has a French theme, so I prefer uh, trash du blanc. Yeah. No, no, no. We call that we call that the proletariat, Larry. You're you're, you're a good pro. They have the Brigiers place, though. That shows up on your credit card as Brigiers, though, and wives tend to ask questions. Yeah, just does a word of the wife. Not that that happens. <laughs> well, remember, Paul, we, we 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 have an out. It's like if my wife looks at anything on my credit card, I'm like, oh, it was a Paul or Larry, and you guys can do the same for me. And we're Everyone all, says that. <laughs> what is that? There's a really boring bar at uh, Mandalay Bay called Eye Candy. Yeah. And it's like, if I'm going to get that kind of grilling over the credit card bill, I want to, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, Dan. So, Dan. Dan, are you there? Dan, buddy. Dan. Yeah, I am Dan. absolutely. Speaking of eye candy. Speaking of eye Speaking candy. Of rampant alcoholism. <laughs> Dan Crowley is here with us. The eye candy rampant alcoholism mohawk bearing. Uh, he is an application security consultant for Trustwave Spider Labs. And, uh, as I heard, was in the fabulous bathtub at the party. Uh, he is particularly focused on vulnerabilities caused by a failure to account for little known or even undocumented properties of the platforms on which applications run. Uh -huh. He especially enjoys playing around with web-based technologies <laughs> and rock climbing, has been known to be a unicorn furnace, and makes a mean chili... <laughs> Quite worthy of Paul.com post exploitation towels. Welcome, Dan. <laughs> what does that wow. mean? <laughs> wow, we rolled out the extra special red carpet for you, my friend. <laughs> you know what, Dan? You've been here on the show before, so you know what to expect. I, I, I have been on the show before, yes. So, uh, <laughs> so, so, but you even, so what learn. you're saying is now, even now, we've exceeded your expectations <laughs> of and you didn't learn. awfulness. I, so, I am overjoyed. Dan, tell us what an oracle is, please. I was going to ask if you got to keep the mohawk first. Oh, yeah. Did you get to keep the mohawk, or did you have to shave it on your first client engagement? 
Yeah, I had to shave it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is that I, I buzzed it with, but it's a little bit longer than the rest of my hair. Yeah. So this, like, stealth mohawk. If you look at it in the right stealth light, mohawk. I've got this stripe down the middle of my head. It was public. not a stealth mohawk when you were at DEF CON, no, though. Yeah, was not at all. Yeah. It, was a rockin', it was one of the most rockin' mohawks I've, I've seen there. I appreciate it. It looks good, man. I, w I wish you could have kept it. I was pulling for you. Same here. <laughs> your pulling. co-workers weren't you were so uh, pulling for what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your co-workers weren't so optimistic. So, tell us what an oracle is. So, basically an oracle on a, a most generic uh, level is any system that a black box system that takes user input, uh, processes it and then returns the output. Gotcha. So, uh, so it's not really the nice. database company with all the vulnerabilities. It's not the right. character from the matrix. That's right. What other so, Oracle references did you have in your presentation? Right. <laughs> right. Um, uh, no cryptographic gurus like Adi Shamir, so we're not talking about, you know, you know sh I'm not talking with Schneier here. Uh, that's not the, uh, the crypto Oracle that, uh, that I'm talking with. Um, these, crypto, uh, these crypto Oracles are just systems which take in user input and then run them through some crypto operation <laughs> and give us back the output. Um, and this can be really, really useful. So, um, for instance, one uh, one thing that one thing that most people have heard of is the padding oracle. Um, most people who have installations of ASP.NET have probably heard of it because it caused them headaches. Um, there's a significant padding oracle flaw in ASP.NET, uh, but padding oracles are actually just one of a larger class of uh, sort of systems. Um, and padding oracles, just in their very most basic form, only allow you to tell if the padding on uh, a, a, a piece of ciphertext, a piece of encrypted data, is actually correct or not. So if you fiddle around with the, the part at the end of a bit of ciphertext, which is where the padding goes, you can see uh, some, uh, some systems will come back with an error that says, this is invalid padding. Um, when you get that, that generally, uh, that, that might mean, depending on how they've done it, that you can turn that into a decryption oracle. Um, they even went, uh, Dong and Rizzo, who presented on the padding oracle stuff, even uh, presented a way to turn it into an encryption oracle, which uh, respectively allow you to decrypt any data you want or encrypt any data you want. And that's mostly what I talked about, is mm -hmm. systems where you don't even have to use that trick with the padding. You're just talking about um, straight out decrypting stuff, straight out encrypting stuff. Right. So now, the way I understood it from your presentation, and mostly from intern Ian, because he actually attended your presentation. It was good. <laughs> it was good. Um, was that you've got, in a web application, you may have a username and password field. You enter it in. There's some algorithm that encrypts it and then sends it to the web server and validates it. Um. Sort of. Sort you of. send the you send the plain text password to the web server, yep. uh, and it encrypts it, puts it in a cookie, and then sends it back to you. Ah, I gotcha. So okay. So now you have the encrypted version of that data. Mm -hmm. So, but now. then, um, you know, crypto one hundred and one. That means you've got some. Well, you've got a way to take plain text and get ciphertext. And if you have both plain text and ciphertext, theoretically, you should be able to figure out the encryption algorithm. Correct. Well, you might be able to picture, you, you can probably figure out the encryption algorithm. Uh, what you might be able to figure out is the key, but uh, the gold standard for crypto algorithms um, is that you should not be able to break it even if you can encrypt any data you want. I gotcha. Now, one thing I found is that the default encryption algorithm for cold fusion is actually pretty weak. Uh, so, for instance, if you have a decryption oracle, uh, you can actually turn it into an encryption oracle. Now the the details of this algorithm are not are not public, but I was able to use uh, you know like make myself a crypto oracle and then just using that just using this web application that had this flaw, uh, reverse the algorithm, understand how it works, and then break it. So you can do some pretty powerful stuff. So what does that what does that give you in a penetration test in terms of being able to do that from a practical well, perspective? Well, it's funny you ask that because uh, the day after I came back from DEF CON, I was doing a web application test, and I actually found a decryption oracle uh, that eventually led to compromise. 
what was going on was that you uh, have certain data tied to your uh, account, uh, an email address, which you specify, and a user ID. Mm -hmm. So not only can you specify, you know, specify anything that comes out as a valid email address and get that encrypted, there's also one place where the email address is taken from the cookie and placed into a text field in the uh, in the um, in the in the web application. So you can decrypt anything that's using that same cipher and key, and everything oh, was. I see. So I was able to decrypt the user IDs uh, for different accounts, um, and then do some bit flipping. Uh, you know, just try different things and modify the ciphertext until I got a different user ID. And then I could uh, I could do horizontal privilege escalation, be logged in as other users because I could change that data however oh, I like. That's so awesome. There may or may not be a cigar uh, for not a forum, but a uh, auction site that runs a particular cold fusion that I noticed. <laughs> and that would be so cool just to show up as other users and go, no, I didn't really want to bid on that. <laughs> is, is, is that the one where there was an unpleasant person? No, that was a oh, forum where there was an unpleasant person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So sorry, just making practical usages of your hard work, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> yeah. Not that I would do that without permission, just of so we're clear. Yeah. Right. No, record. that would be wrong. <laughs> But a very, a very scary thing, like in a use case such as that, right, where it's very important that other users don't become other users. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what's interesting is, um, you know, this was, this, this was an example of, uh, of intentional disclosure. Um, but an example of in, unintentional disclosure might be that you take in an encrypted file path. Maybe you do this because you want to specify file paths on the fly to be included but you don't want to let the users do it. So you encrypt the input so that uh, a user would have to be able to encrypt stuff in order to, uh, in order to get that information, in order to get like, you know, a file inclusion flaw going. So, you know, there's two problems with that. One, if you can find an encryption oracle, you can take control of that anyway. The second problem is that um, you might not handle errors correctly. So you might assume that any valid ciphertext that goes into there is going to be exactly what's expected. But let's say that there's some ciphertext somewhere else on the site um, that's using the same key and the same cipher, which again is not, not uncommon, it's very common. So you take some ciphertext from somewhere else, let's say you have a password encrypted and used in a cookie, uh, some authentication thing. You stick that into this script which is expecting an encrypted file path it decrypts it correctly, so it assumes it's fine, tries to use it in a file path, which doesn't open, and then it throws an error saying, sorry, I couldn't open this path, and the path that it throws back includes the data that was decrypted. Mm -hmm. So there's an unintentional decryption oracle. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So what do you do to defend against this type of attack? Well... First, uh, key reuse, uh, initialization vector reuse is a bad idea. Mm -hmm. um, you're just sort of asking for trouble. So that's, that's the first thing. Um, that, that, makes, uh, that makes these attacks a lot more deadly. The next thing is you want to leak as little information as possible. And that's, that's the reason, uh, and that's just sort of an overarching thing in all of security. Um, actually, there is a great quote in uh, Traps of Gold. Um, if knowing is half the battle, shut up. So, <laughs> oh my God. it's and and, and that, that, that's brilliant. That's great. So, um, fan, a fantastic quote, absolutely true. And um, and so the the key is to shut up. Don't you know? Unless you really have to, don't give the user any information. You know, especially when you're working with cryptography. The more information you have. The more dead, the more dangerous you are. Like uh, RSA by itself, uh, for instance, just plain vanilla RSA is actually um, can actually be broken if you have an encryption oracle. So, um, and not a lot of people know that. So, you know, there are certain things which uh, just aren't suitable for that kind of use. Um, the other thing is that. Um, I think cryptography is in a place right now where it's really hard to use correctly. I really like the Keysar, um, the Keysar uh, project from Google. 
because it's trying to make cryptography easy to use in a secure way. Now you lose some flexibility. You might not be able to choose the cipher or what cipher mode you're using or anything like that, but it's going to give you secure, you know, uh, secure choices, or at least what's currently known to be secure. So you don't have to worry about that. So Dan, <clears throat> I heard you played, uh, had a little zero day denial of service bug on the DEF CON drinking game. I did. Uh, why don't you describe to our listeners what that consisted of? So the DEF CON drinking game, for those of you who don't know, is where you go to talks with some alcoholic beverage of choice, and when you hear some buzzword like APT, China, mobile, uh, botnet, you take a drink. Cyber? Huh? Cyber, cyber in that list? Cyber. Cyber, yeah. Cyber. So I had one slide in there um, which exploited a flaw in the DEF CON drinking game in that uh, buzzwords are pretty easy to predict. So by just brute forcing buzzwords, by uh, having a slide completely full of common buzzwords, I was able to overflow the livers of several attendees. Nice, nice. I'm sure they would do that all on their own. Yep. And a lot of our listeners would like to say thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah. They need it. Because our listeners, if there's one thing they need, it's an excuse or a reason to drink. <laughs> this is true, especially while listening. Well, Dan, thank you very much for appearing back on the show. You're very welcome. Uh, it's very nice to have you. Are you going to be at any conferences coming up soon? I am. I'm actually going to be speaking at Hacker Halted. Um, the title of the talk is Jack of All Formats. Gotcha. Um, where I'll be talking about uh, combining several diff- uh, making a file able to be read as several different formats at once. Mm, interesting. Now, where is Hacker Halted? That's in Miami. Miami. And when is that? Uh, it's in October. Gotcha. Alrighty. Well, Dan, thank you very much, and uh, we hope to see you at uh, a Trussell Spider Labs party with a fabulous tub sometime soon. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Tub thank you.